you want to hit record or? Yeah, I already did. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I guess we should start by introducing ourselves. I am a recent graduate from Thinkful and I went through a couple of mentors. So I definitely learned along the way about what to do and what not to do. I'm currently looking for jobs and with you being a mentor at Thinkful, I think you definitely have more insight as to what should be expected from students and what you've seen works and what doesn't. I don't know if you want to give a quick intro. What you sure. Do. Yeah, I'm TJ. I've been a developer since 2002 professionally as a hobbyist since 1996. Which I'm really old. <laughs> You're not that old. <laughs> I've been a mentor for five and five, little over five years. And, uh, but before that I taught web development at colleges, uh, normally in like a night school type of situation. So yeah, yeah. that's, that's well, me in a nutshell. Cool. Um, and you just, Kind of to clear this up, you were actually never my mentor officially, right? but you, through Thinkful, there's like Q&As and I attended almost every one of your Q&As. Yeah, so I kind of want to get your opinion on what's a common thing that you see among students that could be improved. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, I do a lot of Q&A sessions and a lot of workshops. And mm -hmm. the one workshop that I require my students to go do is my time management workshop and learning how to learn workshop because it doesn't matter what program you're in. It doesn't even matter if you're a developer, right? It, you've yeah. got to understand how you learn. If you know how you learn, you can learn anything. You really can, uh, development or otherwise. And it also goes back to time management. Like mm -hmm. if you really, really want to get something done, you all it's very easy. Just every day, block a couple hours out for it and it will get done. It might not get done by a specific date, Mm -hmm. And that's not what the goal should be because we're terrible at estimating how long something's going to take. Right. Right. Um, so it's just, hey, I want to become a developer. Cool. Three hours every morning, mm -hmm. work on becoming a developer. And eventually it will happen. You know, I have students right now who show up and say, you know, work's been busy, life's been busy, and I haven't been able to get things done. And it's not, it's not so much a lack of time, it's a lack of prioritizing. And that's something that I definitely struggled with. Um, and I kind of went up and down throughout kind of mm. the course. But I think you hit two really good points. And that's time management is key. Like if you, ha especially, especially when you're enrolled in Thinkful and trying to get through a program, trying to get through certain curriculums, and it's both working on like projects as you're learning totally new material for most students. So I think just dedicating the time to sit down and like focus on that is crucial. And then I think the other huge thing is learning how to learn, or at least knowing how you learn best. And, and I think from my perspective is knowing how you learn helps you prepare with these mentor sessions because it'll help you ask the right kinds of questions to get mm -hmm. you the kind of information that you need in order for you to learn best. Like what are some common things that you do when you're starting off with a student? I think one of the first things that I do with a student is to try to understand where they're coming from. The first question that I ask in our first session is tell me about your life up until the moment you decided to do this program and including like the impetus of what mm -hmm. caused you to do that. We talk about this in the, in the time management course, but it's knowing your why. Like, and that doesn't mean, um, Oh, I'm doing this to get a better job, to get more money, right. uh, to be able to work remotely. Those are just like facts. Those are side effects. Yeah. Like what is the real why? And it should be emotional, but we'll have long hours. We'll have uh, moments of frustration, moments of exhaustion and knowing what the, I, I hate the word goal, but knowing what the mm -hmm. end result is going to be okay. and why you're doing it, it should invoke some emotion. It should make you tear up when you explain it to people. Don't keep it inside because the more people that you tell, the more people that are on the journey with you. Um, so that's kind of one of the first things that we try to get out there. Mm -hmm. And then I also establish with the student how we're going to communicate outside of sessions. Like, sure, we've got our scheduled time and our allotted time every week where we can talk one-on-one. -on -one, mm -hmm. But there's always going to be issues in between. And sometimes it's something as simple as just reaching out 
and asking a quick question that I most likely have a quick copy and paste URL I can give you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't eat up a lot of my time. It doesn't eat up a lot of your time. But otherwise, it should take nothing more than 30 seconds of frustration, five minutes of Googling, mm -hmm. and then reaching out to outside resources. Yeah, definitely on the communication, just because I, you know, like I said, I went through a couple different mentors. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that had I communicated from the beginning on how to communicate with each other, things would have gone a lot more smoothly. Some people are okay with those like five minute questions and, and other mentors like, you know what, save your questions. I'll look at them an hour before and then I'll have those answers ready. So I think defining the best way to communicate between mentor and student is very helpful. And it, I think, releases a lot of stress too, because then, you know, it's not either on the mentor or the student side being like, oh, they're not responding to me, like I'm bugging them or mm -hmm. those kinds of things. But to your other point about defining goals, I think that's funny because like right before I started, um, I sat down and I was like, why am I doing this? Like I, I sat down and I made sure to, that I was signing up for something like a boot camp for the right reasons. And it's exactly what you said. It's writing down and, and finding your why. And it's something I look at almost every day, if not every week. And it's like, right, this is why I'm doing it. Like in those moments of frustration. And I think being able to tell that, share that with your mentor and having somebody else hold you accountable to your why, or kind of remind you, be like, Hey, well, remember, you know, you're struggling now, but get through this. And, and that's one step closer to, to reaching that why. So I'll share with you my why. We were in a position where we were checking off all the boxes you're supposed to check off. Like how many cars yeah. do we have? Are we buying a house? Like what, it, what, how is this happy? Like how is this bringing us joy? So the end goal, which is what we're doing close to what we're doing now is now we get to travel full time and spend it with my kids, spend it with my wife. We get to go do fun experiences. So that's the why. Let me see. Okay, to scale it back to the actual mentor sessions, what are some some common things that you saw within STAR students? You know, we have this philosophy of like, in order to accomplish the program in a specific amount of time, mm -hmm. you had to commit at least 20 to 25 hours a week, right? And that would allow you to hit the six month goal. The students that I saw constantly succeed were the ones that treated it like a full-time job okay. and that's if they already had a full-time job or if they didn't my star students mm -hmm. all had full-time jobs i believe that because i feel like you have to know how to manage your time and taking on two things two major things like that is you either know how to manage your time or you don't and something's got to give like you have to make sacrifice time is just going to add up you're going to get into a flow state you're going to do things twice as fast mm -hmm. if you constantly start and stop and oh it's okay i have time to do it on this other day <laughs> it's not going to work i mean i had to build sacrifices for years for years i had no social life yeah. when i was learning and that was in the mid 90s and early 2000s i didn't have youtube i didn't have you to me i didn't have any oh yeah I didn't even have Google at that point, right? So, um, you know, it's a lot easier now. There's so much more information. And so it's very accessible. And then you've got mentoring. You've got student Slack. You've got a support mm -hmm. network. All that you need is time. And so there's going to be moments that you need to sacrifice, but it's for the greater good. And, um, yeah, that, I would say that's that's been the most common trait. It's just the willingness to, to put yep. more time into it. Yep, and I think I am the exact opposite example of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you know, I went and I was like, like, yeah, 25 hours, like that's nothing. I'm going to treat this like a full-time job. And then before I knew it, I was four or five months in and not even halfway through the program. I mean, I graduated a whole month later, I had to buy an extension. By the time I got to that point, I felt like I was digging myself out of a hole and I did not like that because um, that was not my intention. And so I think what you're saying is is key. And I, I think my advice to any incoming student is it's no joke, like put in the hours, put in the time, the minimum amount of hours, which I think they said like two to three hours a day. I think the min those hours gets you just through the program. Right. But I think with so many resources, like you're saying, Google, Udemy, uh, other students take on other projects while you can and take advantage of having a mentor, having Q and A sessions, um, having the curriculum, like, and being in that flow. For sure. It's taking advantage of all of your resources. 
for mentor sessions, um, I kind of want to list like just a very simple list out of like getting the, making sure you like your video and your audio work, uh, getting up all the tabs open that you might need open or any projects loaded. Having yeah, I would say that there, you know, because mentor sessions are normally kind of in the middle of the day or the end of the day, mm -hmm. there's a lot of times students are like, I just sat down, right? And I think that's okay, but that means we're gonna have to context switch, right? And if our right. mentor session is only 30 to 60 minutes long, mm -hmm chances are it's going to be almost towards the end before you kind of get in the group, right? If you're just starting. And I think as a student, I think it's good for you to kind of know what we as mentors are meant to do in a mentor session. Yes. We are there to get you unstuck. Of mm -hmm. course, that's always priority number one. Yeah. Priority number two is to go into more depth on things that, mm -hmm. hey, I got it working. I went through it, but I still don't understand it, mm -hmm. right? And so whether that's, here's some code, I fixed it. Why is this the fix? Or would, would this be best practices? Would you do this on the job? Right. What's an example of this? How would you solve this, right? Mm -hmm. These are all different ways of learning. Almost think of your mentor session could be like a, a YouTube channel, a YouTube video that you have control over. You know, it's an opportunity for you to learn more. I used to tell students all the time that I'm not your teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm not your parent, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to shame you if you didn't get something done. Um, but I'm also not here to teach you. That's what the curriculum is for. Right. Similar kind of relationship, right? right? Of like, you have access, you want to be this and you have access to someone who is this, but yeah. know that, that you, that mentor is there to help you fill in those gaps. And I tell my students all the time, look, you can slack me with questions if they're blocking you. Mm -hmm. I also want you to feel free to slack me with agenda items. Okay. You know? so while you're in the middle of coding and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I got it, but I want to talk more about it. Slack it to me so you don't forget. Right. right. And then going into our session, I can bring up our Slack chat and I have an agenda list. Um, and I think this comes back to like communicating with your mentor. Like for you, you said Slack me and I'll, you know, we can open that up for others. It was email or others. It's like, it'll be the first thing we look at, but just having those questions gathered and having them available right then and there so that you can go straight into your questions with what you're saying about like why mentors are there. I think that's very important to know. I didn't have this conversation with one of my mentors until literally the last mentor session that just totally opened my mind. And I looked back and I was like, ah. I, as annoyed as I was during those sessions where I just felt stuck and like it wasn't helping. I look back now and I'm like, those sessions are the ones that push me forward to figure it out on my own. But right. there is going to be a point, like you were saying, where you're going to be on the job. And so you're right. going to have to figure this out on your own. Now that I've graduated, I want to make clear that as students, you have to understand that mentors are there to help you and that yes, you're going to get frustrated. Yes, it's part of the journey. No, your mentors are not doing it on purpose to make you go crazy. <laughs> um, and that goes for mentors in Q&A sessions. Like they're there to help you. And if they're not necessarily telling you what you want to hear, there's a reason behind it. It's almost like some Sometimes it's like, ugh, they want me to fail, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's not true. Um, no, and no. I, I just, I want to express that because I, I definitely was in those positions. Oh, one last I did want to bring up uh, mm -hmm. before jumping off was as far as mentor session, we talked about putting in the time, but what about right after the session? Well, definitely good note taking will help with that. Um, okay. I have students all the time that will like screenshot something while it's mm -hmm. happening. I like to use technologies that allow us to share our keyboard and mouse so that we can mm -hmm. code together. It's more like, let's learn through coding together. I think just establishing that with your mentor mm -hmm. will be helpful. Any of those will work. I wanted to thank you for recording this with me and sharing your input on your side of the, of the mentor sessions. Well, I look forward to doing more of these. So maybe it can help other students.